Okay, so next, um, next to come, um, let's put the elevator, the um, horizontal stabilizer on. I'll just say, um, thinking of fitting that. Okay, so we got the. Um, this is an old one of the first things I cast really, so this needs doing again. Feels a little bit heavy to me. Um, I think I could get this a lot lighter, definitely. Um, and also, you can see in yeah, this is about about six months ago. And what I did was I actually put this back in its mold to keep it safe and stop it from breaking. And it's actually got some dimples on this little area here, and this little area here. It's almost like it's sucked itself in. Because um, I remember when I actually cast these, it was like, yeah. You know, I've glued this so it's actually sealed, so there's actually a sealed void in there. And I was quite happy, I thought, oh, that's actually added some strength, a bit like a, I don't know, blow up ring or a tyre. Um, but I think that can work both ways. Obviously, if the, um, the external pressure is higher than the internal pressure, it's going to push itself in. So um, I've tried dropping a pin in there uh, just to let, let the pressure equalise a bit, but it doesn't matter. I think it's actually going to hold that shape now. So it's not a problem, that's one of the first things I, I, um, I cast. Like I said, so the way, actually, the way it's actually set up is if you have a look here, um, we've got a little indentation, a locator that um, the carbon rod's going to fall through, like a little bush, like a little bushing type um, thing that's 3D printed. Um, try and hold that up for you. Okay, and it's, it's not the best colour to see because it's clear, um, but it's got like a, a flange that actually, as wide as I can, it can can get it to stop that any stop in that sort of plane. So I mean that rotates really really nicely. That that's as printed on a three mil piece of carbon. Yeah, and there's no slop in that whatsoever. Okay, and all that does is um, there's a left hand and right hand version of these, and they just slide through there and it locates, and this fits into that little hole there, and we'll just glue that in, um, and that will give us our. Uh, A rod that's going to drive our horizontal stabilizer. So if I just push this on, you zoom out a bit. Okay, you can still see it. I'm focus still. And push that into there. Hopefully, um, yeah. Hopefully, you get a good idea how that works. And again. You know, this is as cast. I've done very little um, sanding on this um, afterwards. Um, I'm just amazed at how tight everything fits. You see the gap in here. Obviously, when we put it together, we finally put it. We have a slight gap, and then I might put a small washer or something in there. Um, but I mean, that's it's lovely. That is, that fits lovely. Um, let's go. You know, it's um, very free. Um, and then what we're going to have is the, <coughs> we'll have a, um, a horn on here that drops down just into this area here, with the recesses, and then we'll have a, the, dry, the um, server dry, uh, push rod coming down and connecting onto there, just in that area there, just above the ducting. So that's how that goes. Um, let's zoom out again. Okay, so I'll leave that on so we can get a, a feel for how big the uh, plane is. So next to the wing, um, a little bit on the design of this, how the wing um, comes in here. So we've got this little lip here. <coughs> and what I've done is I've, I'll show you a bit, I'll see this. Okay, I've designed a, there's a little bit of a step on here, just on this edge, so that's where the wing comes in and then the, the ducting actually sets on and rests up to that front face of the, the lip. And I wanted that just to give it a little, the ducting a little bit of support on the inside. So, you know, it just supports the inside and something to glue onto. Um, and then on the inside here, you can see I've put a little bit of a, I've done a little bit of reinforcement, a flange going all the way around, um, just to thicken that area up a bit. Um, as you can see at the moment, just, just with the wing off, you know, it's, it's uh, let's have a look. Yeah, got quite a lot of flex in it before, you know, it doesn't even creak or anything. So it's, it's, it's a lovely material, this. Um, so, but once the wind goes in, it stiffens everything up really nice. So, um, let's zoom out a bit more. Okay, so the wing just basically push it in, pull it up. I should just sand a little bit just to do the, like a final fit on this. Um, as you can see there, it's absolutely perfect the way it fits in there. Um, let's zoom in. 
So yeah, from a you know from a modelling point of view, I'm really really excited at how well everything's fitting. Um, the sort of design tolerances, the printing, the foam, and the casting. And you can see there's definitely no crack in there. It's just really really smooth, fits in really nice. And then on the inside, um, you can see it comes up flush on the inside here. It's a good chunk of um, material you know to glue into there. So we've got uh, let's zoom out a little bit. You can see the whole plane. Okay. This is where I start getting excited because the, 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 it's actually starting to really look like a hunter now. You know, it's um, you can see the the shapes coming along really nice. Then when you pop the the canopy on that, pop the canopy on there, and um, oh, try and hold it on there. Get my fat hands out the way. You know, we're really starting to see the beautiful lines of the hunter. Um, you know, oh, try and get there. So yeah, so um, <coughs> basically, you know, really, really happy with with the way everything's fitting at the moment. Um, next thing I suppose we're going to have a look at is how the ducting actually fits in. Oh yeah, the other thing I was going to show you is. Um, this will all fit inside the jig like this as well, so I can actually use the, so as you can see, that um, having that removable is going to be quite handy should I need it, um, to finally, you know, set everything up right at the end. Um, uh, so I could have it like that and I can work on half the ducting, so I can work on half the side of the ducting and the motor, get everything installed get the two servers and get the push rods in and everything and then make sure the other side fits on glued on uh, hopefully Bob's your uncle um, or quite equally I think it'll be just as easy to work on it you know sort of like it more of a traditional way because it's you know it's everything's really really straight I mean these these edges down here are like super straight you know there's no twisting no warping in it um, you know so you could quite easily, I think, I'll know more once once, once I've printed the other side and cast the other side and then offer the two together, you know, how difficult it would be to get this, this seam here perfect. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's no, no serious dramas, no serious issues there. So let's move that out the way and bring in the left hand part of the ducting. So, recall, our ducting is going to be like that inside the hunter. This is the front part, so that's going to go fit inside the wing, and then we go a motor at the end here. Yeah. So I'll just, actually I think the way I did it earlier was to drop it into the, the wing first. So we pop this into the wing first. Again, there's a slight step inside here. Um, I don't know whether you can see it or not. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, there's a side step in there with the, the, the ducting come up, but I mean you might need to trim it and mess around with it a bit, but I don't think it's um, too much to, too, too much to worry about. <coughs> and then, hopefully, I can do this without breaking everything. Okay, sorry about that. <coughs> it's one of those jobs where you need uh, a couple more pairs of hands, more because I haven't tapped um, glued anything so it's trying to assemble it all dry at the moment um, so as you can see the um, the inside comes in and then goes on the other side of this little tab we write it rotate it around you probably see a little bit of view and then um, you see how nice that all fits up on there um, so yeah happy with the way that fits next that we've got is we've got a couple of bulkheads um, that are printed I expect I'll use printed ones in the end. This one's a little bit warped, um, so it's not the bestest of uh, prints. And again, um, try and get that underneath there. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a job. It's not like very hard. It's that way around. Oh, that's the top. Okay. Again, those days just pick up on the little. Um, I'm going to pull that out. Oh, actually, no, leave it in. It should be out. Should go wiggle that in there. I'm just going to hold that with my other hand. Pop that over the duct. Okay, so that sort of self-locates in the little flanged um, 
in the little flange recesses I've designed in there. You can't really see them all that well on the um, left, you can pick them up. So that will go on there like that, and then obviously the other part of the duct will go in the wing uh, and then slide through again um, a sole. These actually slide through a little bit further. <coughs> then we've got a, I don't think this is the actual one I'll be using, then we've got a ring that fits on, slides on there, and then the, uh, the motor bit then slides onto that. And then we get to the rear, which I'll just show you now. Zoom out a bit. So again, we've got a little bulkhead um, with a little recess at the top there for our push rods to go through to the back. Um, that slides on there. Our exhaust thing pops into there. It's a little flange, but yeah, that stops it. So the inside of the exhaust is flush with the the foam, as it were. Um, that just pops into that, into those flange bits, and then this is the this is the air, the the part that's going to give me the play to get the the fan out. Um, it actually fits in on the inside of. I should have actually put that on first. Hang on. It fits on the inside. It fits into the inside of the um, into inside of this piece. So it's like a sliding joint sort of effort. It does fit. It's going to be a little bit tight. Okay, there it's on now. So we've got about, I don't know, probably about 10 mil of play there, if you see. Push it in, yeah. So um, when it's set up, it'd be pulled right forward like this. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll uncouple the, um, whoops, the fan from this part here, and then I can push that back, which will then give me clearance to get the, um, the rotor out. Well, that's the thinking anyway. So that's all come apart anyway. So. Bulk it goes on there, that bit then just drops in there like that. So that's basically the um, the run for the uh, the ducting on the inside. So yeah, um, very happy with the way things are going. Ideally, it'd be nice to actually print the moulds using the um, SLA printer. Um, probably works out material wise when you think about realistically about probably five six times more expensive using the SLA um, but the benefit is that the um, the fit is, is is really good so much better than the um, these flange bits really sort of um, click into the little locators um, things like that you know if a Especially, I mean, if I was going to put power lines and all the detail and all the hatches onto it, um, I definitely want to print it with the SLA printer because I'll get actually get all those parts. I mean, that fits, you know, like it's supposed to fit. You know, it fits perfectly um, into that. On the, if you have a look at the mould for the, um, oh, there we go, um, the same area, which is this area here, um, it doesn't print it the best um, and I could get a magnifying glass on and whatnot and then go in and tidy it up so I think it's a little bit you know I might have a, have a little tidy up on that and see if I can get that a little bit better I'll just mean that when I come to locate these these kind of things um, it'll fit a lot nicer um, and then again I think if I just cleaned up this cast piece a little bit it fits but it's not, it doesn't sort of click in like the, like the, um, the form labs one does it actually fits. So, as far as sort of jigging and locating, it, it does what it needs to do, really. Okay, the other things um, probably talk about a little bit uh, before I wind up. Uh, I've got the little tray that I've printed. This is going to be for the receiver. Um, and this is going to be like a slide in jobby. So, imagine we've got the cockpit like that. Um, we've got a receiver on there. You can just drop it in and then slide it into these little. Um, slides here, he says. I think I got that on the wrong way around. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, let's try that one. There you go. Um, but heavy at the moment, but I've engineered as it were with the plastic, so we can lighten that up a lot. Um, the battery tray, 
again I've printed a, a part for the battery tray again I think it's a little bit overkill, a little bit too heavy um, part of my reasoning for using the printing uh, some print, printed parts was just to stiffen up um, the fuselage a little bit but I don't think, I think once this is actually glued on and you, you form you sort of form a cylinder shape I think it's going to be really really strong, really really stiff but um, I might do this as a cast you know, foam piece um, but anyway, that, there's a, a little rail in here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, zoom in. Oops. Yeah, see the little rail here? So that's where the, the tray is going to sit. Um, and they'll be, they'll be glued in. Um, so they'll be fixed for the battery tray. And that allows the battery to actually go all the way back here, need be, and then all the way forward. Um, and the ESC, uh, the speed controller, I'm thinking on actually cutting a lot of this part of the um, cockpit hatch out and actually fitting it in that area. Um, the thinking being if it gets a little bit hot then I can always um, redesign a cockpit with a, like a little vent in the in the front here just to uh, blow over the um, speed controller. Um, but yeah, so yeah, no, it's um, all going to plan at the moment. Just not, not enough hours in the day to um, knock it over. So. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Um, those of you who haven't subscribed yet and would like to um, keep watching, um, obviously subscribe. Um, if you like what we're doing, uh, give us a thumbs up. It's, it's great to see people's feedback. Um, and um, a lot of you in the community have actually, um, the ideas you've given me actually driven the, the project in completely different directions than uh, what I've actually started off with. So I really appreciate all the, the feedback you all give me, uh, particularly in RC groups. Um, and all the encouragement um, when the motivation is a little bit low and you get a message from someone saying yeah you're doing a good job you know, just, you know it really really does help uh, lift you so um, thanks again I hope you all find this useful um, even if you aren't into RC um, and you're just into 3D printing and um, some of the things that you can do with 3D printing nowadays okay thanks for watching